Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. This is episode 20. Last time we went and woke up our Lehman because we secured a little pinch of ashes for ourselves. The ashes of Andraste. He has been woken and now he is waiting for us to finish uh, our tasks so we can go and uh, get the assistance of the dwarves and the elves with our Grey Warden treaties. We've chosen Orzammar. We are revisiting home. Uh, they are not welcoming or happy to see me, but they are respecting my position. <laughs> uh, we've brought Wynne, Liliana, and Shale with us because I think it could be interesting to bring Shale to Orzammar. I think that'll be cool. Uh, so let's, let's take a look uh, and see what we can do here. I guess we'll have a family reunion of some kind and we'll also Magnificent. have a look and see how this is going. Statues of the Dwarven Paragons. Yes. If only you had come at a less troubled time. Okay. Bread. Please, sir. Uh, just a bit of bread. Show some pity for a poor old man. Show some pity for a poor old man. How did you Now get... that's a thing of beauty, daughter. If you work hard like Branca, all Orsamar will know your name. Mother, I don't want to be like her. She... Don't say that. Not to me, not to anyone. Now get back to the forge. I want to see more details. Yes, mother. Or I'll throw you into the deep roads as a snack for the stalkers. No. Jesus. No, no, don't hurt me. I just wanted some food. Fucking hell. Just like that dude yelling at that guy. Oh, they disappeared too. Oh no, there, there they go. Off they go. May the ancestors look kindly upon you. Blessings of Julianos upon you. They say the darkspawn have left for the surface. Step back, Brand. Call yourself Warden, but the paragons in this hall should not have to suffer the sight of you. <laughs> you remind me of Lady Cecily. Who? She was an Orlesian lady. My mother served her until she died, and Lady Cecily let me stay instead of turning me out on the street. You are like her in some ways. You have the same poise, the same air of nobility. Oh, child, <laughs> I am hardly noble. I learned that nobility isn't just something you are born with. I have met nobles who are very petty and mean, complete degenerates. Then, there are people with a certain dignity and grace. It draws you to them, no matter who you are or who they are. I think the lowest peasant can have the most noble spirit, and it will always shine through. It is this nobility of spirit that you share with Sicily. Why, thank you, Leliana. It is very kind of you to say that. <laughs> Shale's just like, why are we still standing here? Aha! An explanation for the paragons, okay? Is there one on all of them? No, yes? Oh no, it just unlocks every time you click on one. It just, I have to click on all of them now because they're all highlighted. My brain won't let me proceed. Okay, was that all? Was that all of them? All right, I think so. All right, we got a codex entry. For the Paragons. As I studied among the dwarves, I became aware that their social system was as rigid as the stone that surrounded them. From the lowest servant to the King of Orzammar, each dwarf has a caste, a rigid social standing, which dictates that he may do and how, uh, so he dictates what he may do and how he may do it. What fascinated me then was that the dwarves, stubborn and proud as they may be, have built in a way for even the lowliest dwarf to bypass the caste system and reach prominence. Any dwarf who has made an achievement of significance can be named Paragon, elevating that dwarf above all others. To become a Paragon is to be recognized as, essentially, a living ancestor. Your words are considered ineffable, and the dwarves liken you unto a god. Your family, those who you choose to ascend with you, become the founders of a new line of nobility. Indeed, every existing noble house among the dwarves traces its line back to a founding Paragon. It is a rare thing, however, in my visit, I learned that only one Paragon has been elected in generations. The Smith Branca exalted for her discovery of smokeless coal. I met the Paragon Branca only once during my stay, and I consider it an odd occasion indeed. Surrounded by those of her house, this ill-tempered woman was draped in the finest clothing and jewelry, and was obviously revered even above the highest nobles, perhaps above even the king. 
yet she seemed to enjoy none of it. The burden of being a living legend is great, it appears. Statues of the Paragons are found throughout Orzammar, though nowhere so prominently than in the Hall of Heroes, through which one passes on entering from the surface, it is a breathtaking sight to behold. Great works of stone all seeming to hold up the ceiling above. It is meant to impress upon visitors to Orzammar of all who have gone before, I think. It is also meant to remind dwarves going to the surface, and thus abandoning their brethren forever, of all they are leaving behind. From Stone Halls of the Dwarves by Brother Genetivi. I love reading Brother Genetivi's works. It's great. A commission report on the ground here. The key to the city on Dwarven Proprietary. While your concerns have merit, the assembly has made itself clear. Space within the Thag is at a premium, but the intended function of the hall merits the additional resources committed. The statues of the Paragons must be the core of the Hall of Heroes. There is no other placement that so benefits Dwarven interests. It is the first glimpse that surface ambassadors have of Orzammar, an introduction not just to our living ancestors, but also to the stone from which we were born. They must see it shaped before they can understand the complexity of its raw form. The Hall must also serve a second purpose as a site for departing brethren. Those who choose to leave must do so with the heavy gaze of their ancestors at their backs. It is a reminder of duty and of consequence. We will promote all manner of trade, but also reinforce that those who leave for too long will return as strangers to the stone. From a report of the Assembly Zoning Commission, I really, really love the concept and premise of uh, the dwarves in, in Orzammar. I, I just find it so cool. Like, strangers to the stone. It's such a, it's such a cool, like, backstory, cool world building, cool, like, um, life that they, that they lead for themselves. Not really, uh, cool in a positive note. Like, this is a great way to live, but it's, it's cool to, like, witness these, um, uh, these, these races and these groups and cultures that have, like, these very set, like, rules and it, and it feels all very, like, uh, realized and it's it's very neat to see and it, it resonates uh more with me i suppose at this point in the game considering where we uh, our character actually came from and our dwarven origin being uh the dwarven commoner which is really cool let us head to the commons shall be done It is the Assembly who makes a king, and a king who nominates his successor. None of it is carried in the blood. Or, as now, when someone tries using the Assembly to pull a coup. Who's to say what my father said in his final hours, when the usurper Harrowmont was the only one by his side? I'll have you thrown in prison. You've bitten off more than you can chew! Handlers, separate these dashers in the Diamond Quarter. I will not have Balin incite a riot. Not speak that way about the man who should be king. Oh, the, the oh, 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 the fucking tripped him with the axe, bro. Holy shit! Damn, there's some drama in this place right now. Holy fuck. Okay, Lord Pyral Harrowmount. Harrowmont. No one is born with rights to the throne. The sitting king may recommend a successor, but the assembly ultimately decides who will rule. House Harrowmont is one of the oldest noble houses, as old as Orzammar itself. Endrin's most trusted advisor, Harrowmont, is well known for being an able administrator and the author of many compromises in the ever-warring assembly. Vieta! Enough crime without some castles carrying weapons in the city. Your actions risk pain of death. Name yourself. <laughs> you bother a grey warden on risk of lots of pain. <laughs> warden? Pfft. You? When I heard they accepted a brand, I thought it was a joke. Surfacers and their cloud addled heads. Fine, oh illustrious grey warden. What do you want? The blight is coming, and I need Orzammar's assistance. Surface problems. Well, we have no king to hear you. You can join the shouting at the assembly in the Diamond Quarter if you want. Bunch of Desher lords bickering over sand. Balin, Harrowmont. Is one so different? No paragons here. 
Sounds like Balin and Harrimont are the ones to talk to. They've caged themselves for fear of each other. As you've seen, keeping order down among us working people is dodgy. No place for a proper lord. Balin speaks through his second, Vartag Gavorn, in the assembly. Lord Harrowmont speaks through Doolin Ferender from his estate. You mentioned paragons. Are you sure you're still a dwarf? Ancestors have patience if Bronca could hear this. Well, I wouldn't be standing in dried blood. If you must be our warden, at least know us. Go to the Shaper of Memories in the Shaperit, the true bright spot in the Diamond Quarter. I love that when you're just trying to get dialogue options through, it's the, the characters like actually respond appropriately. They're like, excuse me? How do you not know this, you fucking idiot? Can a city function like this? You have little faith in your own city, Brand. Excuse me, Warden, but this isn't Dust Town. The tavern is open and the market is busy. Orzammar has suffered worse. The ancestors will see us through. I should get going. Yes, you should. Okay. Vartag Gavorn and Doolin Forender. Where must this stare at? Orzammar welcomes the Grey Wardens. Nice. Did you see that? I cannot believe what this city has come to. This would never have happened when Endrin was alive. This Balin, is that the king? Is that King Endrin's son? I, I thought you'd know this. What a terrible burden for a father to have only Balin left of three fine sons. In the end, Endrin himself recognized that Balin cared for nothing but power. It was Endrin who ordered his son away from his deathbed and embraced Lord Harrowmont as his heir. This is also really cool because, like, obviously, if we were just if we were like an an elven or a human Grey Warden. This would be different, but the fact that we're returning home and asking questions, people are like, I thought you should know this. It's it's a cool, neat detail that I really like. What do you know about this Lord Harrowmont? You're from the surface. I thought with all your finery, but I suppose that explains the mark on your face. From long ago, I suppose. Lord Harrowmont should be our king. He was King Endrin's closest advisor, the only one he could trust. Endrin himself, ancestors welcome him, asked the assembly to endorse Harrowmont. Why such hate for Balin? Everybody knows he killed his brother Trian and let his father's favorite son take the blame. And many question whether Endrin died abed, as we were told, or whether Balin helped him along. Uh, okay. Is Harrowmont qualified to rule? He is a good man and a skilled general. King Endrin trusted him with his life, and I will do no less. Who are you? I am Narav Helmi, third daughter of the second matron of House Helmi. And you, stranger, what brings you to Orzammar at such a time? I am Mapo, a Grey Warden, and I am here seeking aid. A Grey Warden? But there are no Dwarven Grey Wardens this generation except for... Oh, that's who you are. I thought, with the brand, I, I assumed you were a servicer. I, I have to go. Oh. <laughs> so, um, actually, excuse me, I will not be seen talking to a fucking dude with a brand on his face. Get the fuck out. I hear there's a new blight coming. How terrible. New blight just dropped. I miss old Endrin. He was a good man. I heard about a brand being recruited to the Grey Wardens. <laughs> I didn't believe it till now. <laughs> Just moves away from me as well. <laughs> the great paragon Branca will never return. The ancestors have taken her from this world. Nug Wrangler, more, more. Uh, excuse me. I um, do you have a moment? Dagna. Okay. Greetings and welcome to Garen Garrison's luxury goods shop. Wow, there are a lot of you. And I've never seen one of those before. The things they come up with. What was I saying? I'm talking about shale? <laughs> Are you all right? Oh, I, I, I was hoping you wouldn't notice. Most people don't anymore. Well, maybe they're too polite to mention it. I had a little incident a few years back. Uh, too much time with the raw lyrium ore, you know. <laughs> maybe it was a bad thing. I, uh, I cut myself and the dust got straight in the blood. Since then, it's been a... Uh, little hard for me to concentrate 
Except when forging, then I'm straight as an arrow. Best work I've ever seen. L -l -l Look around the shop. See for yourself. Aren't dwarves immune to lyrium's effects? I, of course we are. You should know that. I know. Even surface dwarves lose it. Us down here, though, we should be able to handle it just fine. Only not too much, and not every day, and not breathing the dust, and not directing the blood. Ancestors' own bad luck. Let me see your wares. Right. Best in the trade, you know. I work the ore myself. <laughs> All right, let's have a look. Tome of Physical Technique, which would be not bad. The Rose is Thorn for 148 sovereigns. In the darkest alleys on the wrong side of town, tales of the Black Rose prosper. He was an assassin without peer, little known except by his wake of bodies and this dagger left in the heart of a king. Damn. I can see why it's so expensive. Oh. Shit, um, that reminds me, looking at crossbows, I've made another mistake in this game, is um, Leliana needs a bow, not a crossbow, because uh, crossbows are strength weapons, not dexterity weapons. Um, do So I'll, I'll fix that. Jesus, life giver. Plus 10 constitution, plus 3 health regen in combat, 10 health regen while exploring, plus 3 armor, and 20% to healing effects received. A remarkable diamond. Alright, all of your gifts. Some crystals. Liliana. I left all my bows at home. <laughs> Let us be on our Hope there's no combat in Orzammar, of which there probably fucking is. I'll, uh... I'll probably go back to the to the party camp real quick um, and change that bow over before I forget, actually. It is sometimes so hard to believe that you have been through so much at such a young age. I think I look younger than I am. Yes, yes, that is possible. When I was your age, I was just about ready to take on my first apprentice. In hindsight, <laughs> perhaps I should have waited a few more years. I was arrogant, my confidence bolstered by my youth. It is so hard to imagine seeing you now. Oh, I've had some two decades or so to grow mellow. Believe me, back then I was quite prickly. So you are like a fine wine, yes? Losing the raw edges over time. I suppose there is some truth to that analogy, but dear maker, I do hate being compared to wine. Or cheese. <laughs> Especially cheese. <sighs> Do not compare me to cheese. I do not wish to be cheese. All right, surely I can go back to the, yes. Surely I can go back to the camp from here. Oh, how you remind me of a summer's cheese. Okay, storage chest. Let's see, we would like, um, actually I can't remember now um, how much dexterity that uh, Liliana has 750 960 840 looks like mage's eye I think is our best one but that needs 34 dexterity and Liliana definitely doesn't have 34 dexterity um, whoa, okay It doesn't have very good range either. All right, Liliana, where you at? What you got for me? You got 30 dexterity, um, which means you get the Antivan longbow and I'm probably gonna bring the mage's eye in once she um, gets a little bit uh, it's a little bit more dexterity. Andraste's arrows to interrupt spell casting would be really good. So when some mages come in to play, which won't happen in Ozma, <laughs> I'll have those arrows ready to go. <laughs> I have those arrows ready to fucking go. All right, um, Liliana, here is your Antivan longbow, and here are your ice arrows. Have those, will you? 
get this crossbow out of here. Perfect. Okay, I fixed my Liliana issue. Figures imports. Key required. Hello there. Oh, I actually was talking to your companions. Or are you from the surface too? Huh? Uh, can I help you? I've been trying forever to find someone who really knows the surface world. I, I don't suppose you've heard of something called the circle? My companion here is a senior enchanter of the circle. Oh, my lady, it's an honor. I've never met an actual mage. Is it true you can manipulate nature's forces with your mind? Like you were born with lyrium in your veins? Don't let the glamour fool you, child. Wielding magic is a dangerous occupation and a great responsibility. <laughs> Why is a dwarf interested in the circle? I've been trying to reach someone there for years. I've sent missives with every caravan, but I never get a reply. I want to know if they would accept me for study. I hate to break it to you, kid. Um, you want to leave Ozama? I want to go to the circle to study. I don't want to do magic. No dwarf can cast spells, but I don't see why I shouldn't study it. It would be a valuable exchange. Orzammar would learn of one of the great natural forces of the surface. And the circle gains direct access to our knowledge of lyrium smithing. I mean, that's pretty cool. I can bring the circle your request. That would be wonderful. My name is Dagna, daughter of Janar of the Smithcast. Tell them I've already begun reading the Taventer Imperium's Fertikum Kadab, and it's just fascinating. Did you know the Imperial Magister Lords once had genealogies of every human family known to produce a mage child? She's so enthusiastic and adorable. I'm glad we're helping her. <gasps> oh, I'll go pack my bags right now. I'll be waiting by my father's shop. They could say no. Like, I, it's just because I... <laughs> nice. Uh, just because... Just because I... Just just because just I fucking said I'll take the request there. Don't pack your bags. You might be... You, you may be disappointed. All right. What's she, what's she saying about the... About the the book forklift kebab, she's already started studying that. That's good to know. She'll be she'll be an expert on magic before we know it. Inspired by your leadership, a minor bonus to cunning. Wonderful. Win also approves. Leliana takes care to honor the Lutheran cloister that took her in and keeps symbols of Andraste's blessings close to her heart. That will be what we give her for gifts. Nug Wrangler bore more. Bore me more, sir. I knew I should have stuck to common nugs. Now I've gone and lost them too. I'll never find them the way they skitter. Common nugs? I don't like those. They look dirty. No way I'm going back to that supplier in Dust Town. <sighs> Guess I'm shutting it down. Yeah? These things dangerous? You gotta boil them before roasting, but otherwise, no. Safe as sand. Some people swear they make good pets. May as well leash a turnip, I say. If I see any nugs, I'll send them your way. Good on you, stranger. Only need one to turn this around. Okay. A lost nug. Nug Wrangler Bormore has lost his nug inventory. Find one of them to get him back on his feet. All right, then. That is certainly, that's certainly a quest. I'll uh, keep my eye out. Alright. Oh, what the hell? There's one right there. Hey, you there. <laughs> Boop! I just fucking squeaked at me. <laughs> nug. Hip deep in mad nugs. Our scream deafened their keen ears. We will be Nug Poop. From songs that only nugs can hear by Paragon Ebrian in the 84th year of the Exalted Age. The Nug is an omnivore common to the deep roads, a hairless creature that is almost blind, as well as completely docile. It spends most of its time wading in shallow pools as well as mud pits, feeding on small insects, worms, and in a pinch, limestone, and simple metals. Indeed, the digestive system 
of the Nug is legendary, able to make a meal out of almost anything a Nug finds on the cavern floors. Nugs reproduce rapidly, spreading into any niche within the deep roads they can find, and serve to support a variety of predators such as giant spiders and deep stalkers. So, too, do dwarves make meals out of them. Nugs are, in the proper slum portions of Orzammar, one of the most common sources of meat available. Some dwarves even domesticate the creatures, claiming to find the creatures' high-pitched squeaks pleasing. Naked mole rat just dropped. Let's go. Oh, we've also got Balin Ajakin. Third of King Endron's children, Balin has always been considered the last and least of his family, not the heir nor the favorite, not as accomplished as either sibling. Balin's most notable trait was his ability to stay out of trouble. Only two more characters to put into the codex after this. Go on, I'm out of the nug game, got nothing to sell. I have found you a nug. Saraka, I'm back in the game, such as it is. I don't have much besides gratitude, but find a bunch more of these and I'll toss you whatever I found. Okay, 12 silver for a, for a nug. I'm fine with that. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to keep my eye out. Shall we head down this way? What's this gonna? This is gonna take us to the deep roads. Maybe we should check over this side. Tavern, Dust Town, Janna Armorers. I think this is um, this is the side that we were on when we were last here because we're from Dust Town. Let's go check. Where are we supposed? Hang on. Where's our? What's our main quest? We gotta speak to this guy in the assembly chamber. Uh, you can find Doolin either in Harrymont's estate, in the Diamond Quarter, or in Tapster's Tavern. Which is this? Oh, I didn't interact with this signpost. What is this signpost? Diamond Quarter, right? Proving grounds, straight ahead. Ah, oh, cool, so we can... Lava bad. Out. Don't go near the lava. <laughs> Good day to you. <gasps> There's another nug. Have you given any thought to your future, Shale? I was thinking I might, oh, join the Chantry, become divine, and have giant Andraste golems fashioned to conquer the lands. Truly? No. It was a serious question. One day the quest of these Grey Wardens will be finished one way or another. What will you do then? The quest of the Grey Wardens is to destroy the Darkspawn, I thought. Oh? So you share a larger purpose with them? Is that your ultimate goal? I had not given it much thought. It might be better than slaughtering every bird in existence. Well, yes, at the very least. It's worth thinking about. Love it. The dialogue bridge has been crossed. On Dwarven Proprietary, the key to the city. Um, we already had this, so, ah, there's more to it now. Pursuant to Order 5-1A, no dwarf of intermediate caste uh, may conduct business in the commons. This was subsequently clarified by the assembly to mean that the owning and operating of stalls or kiosks is limited to those of identified and approved house names with traceable ancestor lineage of at least three generations. Exceptions include individual purchases of goods or services from established stalls or kiosks, provided the funds are presented at the opening of the transaction. At the discretion of the stall or kiosk owner, I'm sure you understand the need to maintain strict quality control over all goods and services that flow through Orzammar, especially when we are making a concerted effort to encourage outside investment. The standards of Dust Town and that of the common brand are simply not sufficient. Your trade permit is hereby denied from a judgment of the Assembly Trade Council regarding Medal's reclaimed wares. Gotcha! Getting paid to pick up naked mole rats. Oh, Dagna has moved over here now. It's been so dangerous ever since the king took ill. You're back? But it takes two weeks and four days minimum to make the journey to the Circle Tower. I don't even know that. <laughs> That's quite impressive. Thank you, great lady. But am I right in guessing you haven't left Orzammar yet? I have the ability of teleportation. Um, I'm not leaving Orzammar until this election is resolved. Sorry. Well, I've waited 19 years. Another month won't kill me. What is in here? Ah, oh, 
<laughs> Life in Orzammar. I've leveled up. Or actually, Shale has leveled up. The dwarves of Orzammar are quite unlike those found in most human cities. Although Orzammar derives its vast wealth from trade with human kingdoms, all dwarves who come to the surface to trade are stripped of their position in society. Dwarven merchants are so ubiquitous in human cities that many people labour under the impression that all dwarves are merchants, or that their whole race worships coin and trade. But these surface dwarves are atypical creatures, the ones willing to give up all ties to their kin and sacrifice their rank in order to, to, to conduct business. Below ground, the dwarves are a people obsessed with honour, their own, and that of their family. Most nobles incorporate chainmail, even into formal gowns, because slights and insults often turn deadly. They are a people who revere excellence and strive to achieve it in all things. Even members of the servant caste have been elevated to paragons, usually posthumously in recognition of remarkable service. Yes. Welcome to Janar Family Armors. I uh, assume you have some kind of dispensation to let you wear all that. <laughs> um, I have a Grey Warden approval. Interesting. So we can ask about uh, Dagna. Janna, do you have a daughter named Dagna? Aye. Has she been bothering you? Gets a whiff of surface stink and she's like a cave tick. Won't let go. She wants to become a mage. Ah, oh, that girl. I've been telling her for years to give up those foolish notions. Magic's a human trick. If Dagna wants enchantment, I can apprentice her to a lyrium crafter. This is Dagna's dream, if it makes her happy. Do you even know what that means? If Dagna goes to the surface, she forfeits her caste. She'll never be able to marry or, or work in Orzammar again. Dwarves don't do magic. Dagna knows that. It's just the childhood fantasy that dies hard. <coughs> you see her send her back and let me talk some sense into her don't let her do what she wants let her do what i want please don't encourage dagna further tell her you were wrong and that her place is with her family sorry bruh i'm not not into that you know anything about what's happening with the king i stay out of politics it's not good for a smith to get the attention of those who grant vendors licenses Lord Harriman's a fair man. My father did business with him. He always paid on time. But the Idukans have served us well. If it is the ancestors' wisdom to keep them on the throne, I cannot object. A a Dukan, you said? A Jukan? Not a a Jukan. A Dukan. You part of the Smith caste? I for a hundred generations. My father made his name by inventing a fall and tacit, which were integrated into the cuirass. But, uh, I'm guessing by your face, you're not a smith yourself. <laughs> Just let me see what's in your store. Of course. <clears throat> uh, keep in mind, we also take items on trade. Trade you this fist in your face. Um, just a lot of dwarven heavy armor. It's, it's so funny being like uh, a dwarven rogue when like basically all the dwarven armor is just like if I was more of a warrior. <laughs> so He's not brave enough for politics. Shale, what would you like? I'm going to do... I'm going to do just that, I guess. Um, let me see. We can give you Killing Blow, Regenerating Burst, Rock Barrage, Renewed Assault. When Stone Aura is active, additional bonuses. And additional bonuses for the party as well. And enemies suffer penalties. I do quite like that. Rock Barrage in a targeted area. After Shale has learned this talent, party members who are nearby, whenever Shale has Rock Mastery, receive greater bonuses to range critical chance and range attack speed. So you could have Leliana and Win near Shale for that. That's cool. Exploding with energy, damaging all nearby enemies who are also stunned. 
Shale gains a bonus to stamina regen whenever stone is active. I think we're going to go for the renewed assault. Renewed assault. Assault by the nine divines. My son, for he is lost in darkness. Mothers keep him safe, for you know what it is to mourn. Filda. I'm sorry. Did you have an offering for the ancestors? I can move aside. I don't have much to bring them. What were you praying for? My name is Filda, widow of Turok of the Smith Cast. I pray here every day for my son, Rock. I only wish I knew whether I should be asking for his safe return or for the ancestors to accept his soul. What happened to him? It was five years ago. He was only a youngster. He joined a Deep Roads excursion, the only smith to go with the warriors to repair their arms. He was so proud that he got separated somehow. When they came home, he wasn't with them. Did anyone go after him? The captains don't want to lose anyone searching for stray men. Too many were taken by dark spawn that way. We shouldn't abandon him. I'll look for him if you want. How? There is no way except to brave the deep roads yourself. I'm a Grey Warden. That's what we do. A Warden? So you could do it. Only Wardens face the deep roads without a company packing them. Oh, thank you. The ancestors finally heed my prayers. Take heart, good widow Filda. We'll do our best. Please, find me as soon as you return. A mother's hope. Okay. Got him. When we're in the deep roads, we will look for your child. It's been so dangerous ever since the king took ill. It's about time the dark spawn started attacking the surface. They bothered us for far too long. Did you see that fight? In the old days, those men would have been told to join the Legion of the Dead. At least then they'd put that anger to good use. But not these days. A brand in the commons. An outfitted like a topsider, no less. Good. Let people see castless have a purpose. The more cracks in the old way, the better. That's what Balin stands for. Your allegiance to this Balin is clear. Why? Not your business, but I see where the gold is. He's the traditional pick, yet he wants a new way, whether some like it or not. Some say Balin killed his father. Just as many say Harrowmont. Neither are Paragon. The scales being equal, I go with the promise of more trade. Yeah. Let's see what you have in store. I'll take your gold. You're good for that. All right. Time of the mortal vessel. One or more points to spend on attributes. Hmm. Tempting, actually. Silverhammer's Evaders for a mage. Shadow of the Empire. Two strength, two dex. What is this? Norwegian design, but unusually subdued and bearing of all unlikely things, the Royal Seal. Ooh. Silver Demon Head Ring. Let me think on it, sir. Legnar. Brother Burkle. Oh, a Chantry Dwarf. Look at this. Maker's blessing on you, brother. Hmm. Interesting. This is not what I expected. Why are you invoking a human god? The Maker brought forth this world and every creature in it. He chose a human woman as his prophet and bride, but he loves all races. I'm Brother Burkle of the Red Cliff Chantry, Returned to my ancestors' land to spread the chant of light. I'm petitioning to open a chantry in Orzammar. Hmm. Whose permission do you need to open a chantry? The Shaper it controls changes in Orzammar's structure and society. I need the Shaper of Memory's permission to open a prayer meeting. The Shaper of Memories? The Shaper of Memories controls the Shaperit, Orzammar's record system. Like the Chantry's historians, but, but more thorough. 
They track the births and lineage of every dwarf born in the city, every property sale, death in battle, marriage, or divorce. Any idea where I can find this Shaper? The Shaperette is in the prime tier of the city, near the royal estate. Does this mean you're, you will help me then? If I bump into the Shaper, I'll be sure to mention it. I can see the Maker's hand on your shoulder, guiding you always. If this Chantry could help just one person as much as it helped me, it's worth any trouble. Please, let me know as soon as you've heard anything. It'll be interesting. The chant in the deeps. The drums in the deep. Brother Berko would like to establish a chantry in Orzammar to spread the chant of light to the dwarves. However, he needs the permission from the Shaperet to do so. You told Brother Berkel that you would speak to the Shaper of Memories on his behalf. In the noble quarter, Nug acquired. We're really just collecting them. Let's check out Dust Town. Lesky would be here, right? Lesky, where you at, dog? <laughs> There's a rich one. We'll get plenty of their kit once we cut them out of it. Okay. That's great. All right. Well, let's do Mark of Death in this guy. And then we'll just dirty fight that guy. And then I'll just flurry that guy. Hey, yeah, it's stunned. I'm the one who does this stunning around here, you fucks. Don't be Oh. Leliana. Oh, Leliana's being attacked by a melee attack, so her tactics coming in to switch to her daggers, because she's smart like that. Doggy. Stun him. Stun him, dog. Oh, I got killed. What the fuck? I really thought that I would uh, have a little more life in me. I actually just got wrecked. I am, dude. Okay. My dog didn't even stun the guy either. Win, I would like a heal, please. I have suffered damage. <gasps> this guy looks like me. This guy has my face. <gasps> I just killed my clone. I, I left. I I left. Uh, what the fuck? That's me. I left Orzammar and they replaced me. <laughs> I've <laughs> Every time a dwarf leaves Orzammar, they, they bring a dwarf out of their dwarven cryo and replace him. That's so funny. That dwarf had my face, everybody. Rogek. Who are you? You don't look like any guardsman I ever saw, and that's not much of a uniform. I'm Maper, a Grey Warden, which apparently is a persuasion. Oh, you looking for a chance to bring in some coin? Could be I have that opportunity. Especially for someone with a few connections above ground. Okay, I'd like, I'd have to hear what you're asking. Human kings, you know, they make these ridiculous laws. Like about who gets to buy and sell Lyrian, the sacred gift the stone provides us to show her love. No law should regulate that. The laws are meant to keep mages away from the stuff, so there's always buyers in the circle tower. I got one man named Godwin. He's expecting a delivery of a stone's weight. You want an investment opportunity? Uh, I could see fit to, say, sell you that lyrium instead at the reasonable price of 50 sovereigns. You can keep it, or, since you can travel freely from here, sell it to Godwin, who you know is buying. And uh, if you bring back his return order, I could pay you, uh, say, 20 sovereigns as a finder's fee. Do I know that he actually wants to buy it? 50 is a bit much when you've got no options. But let's 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 persuade him to take it down to 40. You haggle like a merchant born. Deal. Here's the lyrium then. You uh, probably don't want to take it out of the box. 
I'll be waiting for the next order somewhere out of sight. Say, just around the corner. 40 sovereigns, dude, that I just gave to that guy. The smuggler Rogak needs you to take a shipment of lyrium to the Circle of Magi's contact. There is a mage named Godwin. You fucking better pay me. Because, goddamn. That's a lot of money. Alamar's Emporium. We're just running through everything as we go past it. Alamar. What are you looking for? We got nothing to buy for the likes of you. Or maybe you wanted to sell. This doesn't look like a store. Well, our business is kind of covert, if you know what I mean. It's illegal in Orzammar for me to engage in protected trade, but they look the other way if I share things with my friends for money. I have some spare equipment. What will you give me? Why don't you take a look? Ooh, right. I need that toxin extract. Give me. I actually need to check on how much do we have now? 15. How much do I need? 15? I feel like it was like either 15 or 20. Efforts boots. Massive boots. Ooh, a manual for bards. A book that reveals the secrets of Orlesian bards. I could become a bard with this one, I assume. Senior enchanter's robes. Arrow of filth for nature damage. Adder's kiss. Expert poison making. Mm. I will probably be fine for now. I might make some off-screen shopping trips when I'm when I'm on my way out of here. We'll see. Whoever you're looking for, it's not me, I swear. No, it is you, bonk. Spare coin. Assembly directive. Okay, we got another one of these. Alright, this one. Your efforts have been exemplary, but these self-proclaimed cartels must defer to the assembly and restore order. Exclusion from uh, caste and society is no excuse. Perhaps suggest that it would be a simpler matter to march on the quarter, or simpler still to withdraw infrastructure support. A tunnel breach would be most unfortunate, but current policy direction prohibits any deals that would legitimize cartel operations. Downward pressure on certain elements of our society has proven useful in shoring up the economy with an excess of affordable labor. It also encourages enlistment in the Legion of the Dead, the one accepted path to partial redemption and a vital force on our weakening front lines. This model suffers when criminals create their own hierarchies with alternative methods of social advancement. Every stone has a face that can't be carved, a side that must be earthward. An earthward. We need their so-called dust town, but it would be an inadvisable to include that in your negotiations. We have the utmost faith in you, Cap. And then the rest is obscured by bloodstains. From a confidential assembly directive regarding proliferation of cartels. The assassinated in the middle of riding. I'll just get out of your way. Okay. Idle dwarf. He do be idling. Your clothes are so fancy. Did you get them topside? I'm asking the questions. Yes, I did. My ma'am used to say they don't got no stone to protect them topside. If I go up there, I'm gonna fall into the sky. I'm gonna fall into the sky. You just have to hold on real tight with your feet. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. Yes. <laughs> when my doll left, he never came back. Who's to say he didn't fall up, eh? I have to go now. Don't fall into the sky when you go back up there. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Well, look at that. It's not often old Nadezda sees a fine-dressed stranger here in Dust Town. Help a poor cripple. Adesda, is that you? Well, I'll be a drunken nug. You're Rika's little brother. You used to work for Barat before you jaunted off to be a Grey Warden. What in the dust are you doing here? Didn't you used to run for Barat too? Aye, I did some soldiering for Barat. Until some new commissioned guardsmen decided to teach some brands a lesson. Broke both my knees, then made me kneel in dung for an hour until I passed out from the pain. Never mended right. Barat tossed me on the street since I had no more use. Pretty much how my man told me I'd end up. Jesus. I wonder if that, um, 
can't remember that person that was with Barat. I don't think we ever encountered them again. The the woman. Um, I wonder if she's still around. Is Lesky still living here? Oh, sure. You'll see him around. Not like when you two were cracking skulls together, though. You had the whole neighborhood terrified. I heard the card has expanded since I left. Jarvie has been real shrewd. Some yeah, Javia. Some of thought Barat made a bad choice in her, but they're all feeding the lava. She killed a few of Barat's relatives topside, got them in line, and the goods have been fast and steady since. Thanks for the help. You, uh, look like you've done well. You sure you can't spare a little more? There but for the grace of the ancestors, you know. Here's five for the road. I'll give you ten silver. Yeah, sure. I'll think of you when I go to bed with a full stomach. You got a crust of bread to spare? I do not. Sus a bit for the needy? Suspicious. Suspicious. It's not for me, it's for my child. This door appears to be made of solid stone. There are no visible means of opening it. On closer inspection, there is a small slot concealed in a fold of the stone, just big enough for a finger. Look through the slot. You see nothing but blackness. Oh. Suspicious door. Okay. A door do be suspicious. All right. Is it Linda? H have you a coin to spare, my lord? It's for my son. He's sick. He hasn't any clean clothes to wear or anything to eat today. Neither have I. Why doesn't your son's father help you? A question I ask every day. He was eager enough for a daughter who would bring him into the mining cast. But since the boy was born, I've not seen nose or heel of the lout. And me alone on the street, forbidden to return to my family unless I... But no, I can't bear to even think of it. What does your family want you to do? My son's father is castless, as is he. I used to be a miner, but my parents stripped my caste and refused to accept me back. Unless I agree to abandon the child in the deep roads and pretend I never bore him. Maybe I could reason with your family. Y you would do that? But why? Because it's a side quest to add to my journal and I get experience points. Don't look a gift warden in the mouth. <laughs> Orzammar must change with the times. I know what it's like to grow up castless. Truly? And look at the finery you wear. Maybe there is hope for my boy after all. Then I cannot offer enough gratitude. But I warn you, my father is a stiff-necked man. His name is Ordell, and he's usually at Tapster's in the evening. I do not think he will listen to you. But I will wait anxiously to see if you can do what you promise. I got a silver tongue, baby. I will persuade. You got two silver? I'll do anything you want. Nice. Slums house. Okay, let's go in here. Very well. Very well. Okay, this is this not like where is this not like my house? Where I first started? It has begun. Pretty sure this is where we started the game, right? Maybe? Because I remember asking our sister starting in here with Barat, and then we went out here, and there was our mum, and then we left. But it's not referred to as our house. So I'm assuming that something's happened to our mother, and our sister probably managed to get things going with that with that noble. It's the only thing I can assume. Not in Dust Town. So there you go. So let's get the let's get the hell out of here. Let's check out the tavern then. Uh which is here. I hope that is someone being murdered and not simply singing. <laughs> it has begun. I once drank a thimble of dwarven ale, woke up a week later in Jada wearing nothing but my shoes and a towel. 
If you want a drink in here, Brand, you'd better have the coin. I'll know if it was stolen. Okay, mate. Is that how you treat a Grey Warden? Uh, so that explains the steel you're wearing. I was about to call a guard. I suppose you're the one from the Proving. Well, welcome to Tapsters, and hope we can serve you. I'm looking for someone. I? Maybe I can help. I'm looking for a man named Ordell. He's the one in the corner, still dusty from the mines. Don't expect him to be chatty. Alrighty. I'm afraid to walk the commons alone at night. Those Carta thugs are horrid. Darkspawn attacks have been really light this year. <laughs> Didn't know Cora was letting in brands. I'm a Grey Warden. Ah, you're the one that started all the trouble in the Provings. I'm Naveen. I'm with Prince Balin's Expeditionary Field Unit. Brand or no, anyone who hunts Darkspawn is all right with me. Good folks, Wardens. I was in the Deep Roads when that one came by. What was his name? Dukan, Dunka, uh, something like that. <laughs> like that, I'm like, yes, your name is Nevin. Ne Naveen sounds much, much better, but my name Nevin? Um, well, I didn't, I obviously didn't know Duncan, but there you go. You work for Balin? I go where I'm sent, fight when I'm there, and leave politics where it belongs. Nice. Who's your unit fighting? Darkspawn. Not much use in turning our weapons elsewhere while those vermin still live. Never been in the Deep Roads. Every Grey Warden ends up there. That's where they send you when you're ready to leave this world. Go die in the dark, putting away as many vermin as you can. True. Getting more crowded these days, though. Lots of people interested all of a sudden. We go back tomorrow, and we're not the only ones. Who's sending you out? Valen ordered us in at first bell. He's splitting us into four teams to search for some of the lost tigers. Looking for signs Tigs. of Bronca, I guess. Seems to be who everyone's after. I keep saying thags when I read it. Tigs. Okay. Who else is in the deep roads? Lord Harrowmont's got his own men there, all looking for signs of Bronca. Guess the city's getting to miss having a paragon. Everyone wants someone to put in charge. Okay. What are you looking for? Valen ordered us in at first bell. That is not what I asked. Looking for signs of okay. Bronca, I guess. Thanks for the drink, but I should go. Watch yourself. Orzammar politics are getting near as dangerous as battle. In Dwarven Vavaragas, we in the Vagabella Thank. And in the Rusasaradrava, then we met one. Nasunkalan of Rug and Premalan of Am. Our Handeka Paragan, where am the Sheer or am the Zing. And Tina Breka and Zordans, Nedek Barak's Korhel Varink. But stuck this a power of a gold as you've been dark, the cavir riding. Gordashev Nagorham, Raks a Paragan, where I'm got drink. So good. <laughs> That's great. Ordell. I don't share drinks with Castlers. And I don't share them with boars. Don't start something you can't finish, Brand. I'm gonna punch you in the face, bro. I don't share drinks with- I love Castles. that that didn't lead to any dialogue. <laughs> that was just like, I'm leaving this conversation. I met your daughter. I have no daughter. Could be you met a castless whore claiming she was once mine. If you don't take Zelinda back, she'll die. Persuade, let's go. What? You think she'd die just to keep that thing? She knows what she has to do to come home. I never wanted her gone. Just the little cur. Can't she see she'd have a better life if she got rid of it? He's a baby, not a cur, and she loves him. Look, just tell her... We never meant to hurt her, it just seemed best that... Oh, just tell her to come home. Her mother and I are waiting for her. And poof, he's disappeared. That took uh, that took a lot of effort to persuade him. Nug acquired. Ooh, hey, there's two of you. Hm? No singing until the dinner hour. They're everywhere. I can't take it. 
Okay. What? Get away. You'll change like the rest. Monsters hidden in all my friends. Uh, what are you talking about? They follow you. Once you are in the story, they possess your friends and follow. See? I found copies. All from the same pen and older than the ones in song. Dormant my ass. Take them. I want out. I won't disappear chasing a lie. I... What? Unbound. Oh, this was, um, we read this already, um, on a dead body. I remember that reading that. Something else that's unbound. Three weathered parchments with three versions of the same incomplete story. And when his kingdom fell, so disappeared the stolen riches of an age. The beast, the unbound, dormant until one of the true spirit claims his throne. So must hunt the hero of his people, the principled who would search for ancient evil. This is how they can make a real difference. Scribbled in the corner in a shaky hand. Three pages, three ages. Same story, updated. Same as the tavern song, but older. Signature torn on purpose. But compare and get Vilm Madon. All from him. How? Won't. Okay, sir. This ale was perfect with a slow roasted nuglet. <laughs> Told him I don't understand why the provings aren't open to everyone. I mean, it's how the ancestors show their favor. Do they really need our help to decide who's worthy? And then he practically slapped me. Uh, Liliana, personal space. Lord Denik Helmy, honored desher of the Orzammar Assembly, and terrible disappointment to my esteemed mother, who doesn't like me spending time in taverns. So I'm curious. You've been living on the surface, right? Does it function any worse than Orzammar for having abolished caste? Things are hardly equal on the surface. But there are those like you who see this with concern, no? Well, I've taken the time to actually talk to the other castes. You know, most smiths and tavern keeps would make decent dashes if we gave them a chance and a seat in the assembly. Or Zamar is so mired in tradition no one bothers asking if the castes are even necessary. How does the caste system work anyway? I know, I should know about that. I know about that. Do you know anything about this Carter? The Assembly passed laws prohibiting the castless from holding any job a legitimate citizen can do. Of course they turn to crime. What else can they do? Why should I get going? I'm talking to this guy. As you wish. What the fuck? I wasn't expecting you back. I guess you realize this is about the only fun in Orzammar? What do you think of the candidates for king? I doubt either candidate has been outside the diamond quarter in his life. But Lord Harrimont seems a bit more forgiving. Prince Balin's brilliant, I'll give him that. And subtle as sin. But I don't think anything in Orzammar matters more to him than winning. Okay. As you wish. So you can find him either in the estate uh, or in the tavern. And I am not seeing a Doolin here. So he may be elsewhere. We'll go to the other spot first. Alright, so that's that side done. Went to the old uh, stomping grounds. Now we'll go to the diamond quarter for the first time. Because that goes to the deep roads, right? I can't believe it. I heard a dwarf and Grey Warden came to Orzammar and I couldn't help but hope. Oh, look at you. My little brother, the returning hero. <laughs> and with quite the unusual entourage. <laughs> Is that you under all those jewels? Rika... Can you imagine? As of last month, I'm a royal concubine to House Idukin. They've moved Mother and me into the palace. You could fit our whole neighborhood just in the bathing room. I wish you could meet little Endrin, but they don't let me bring him outside the royal nursery. Ah, I named him Endrin too. There you go, moving on up in the world and bringing the drunken mother with you. 
you, your mother. Of course. I like how it asks questions as if I've just completely forgotten the beginning of the game. A royal concubine? To who? Prince Balin. Can you believe it? Now you see why I didn't tell you. It just seems so amazing. My son is an Idukin. The future king of Orzammar spends his nights in my bed. Barat was a toad, but I have to thank him for teaching me to read, dance, massage, and whatever else Balin sees in me. Oh no. <laughs> of course the game would do this. It's like, now? Oh no, dude. You're like, probably going to help choose and assist who is going to end up becoming the, the king here out of the people and now there is a personal family selfish connection to Balin. oh my god that is that is great fuck you game because <laughs> it's like what's the moral choice now is like what's better for orzammar as a whole for the people that you have to choose between or is it like oh no look how this is going to affect you know my sister my my family now classic but Balin poisoned his father and killed his brother that's a horrible vicious lie Balin told me all about it Lord Harriman always favored Balin's older brother the one who murdered Trian Balin thinks Harriman set the whole thing up to frame him then he had the gall to whisper these things to the dying king when the king sent him away Balin cried for weeks tell me you don't believe these horrible rumors well, Balin is my brother now. I hope for your sake you're right. I am. I promise. Balin could never do anything like that. His first loyalty is to his family. And now you're part of it. But this isn't why you're here, is it? What's wrong? All the news from the surface says terrible things are happening. Darkspawn attacks and a civil war among the humans. A new blight is beginning. Ancestors save us. I was afraid you'd say that. I hate this. Until there's a king, the assembly would let the world collapse rather than bow to anyone's better judgment. But I can introduce you to Vartek Gavorn. He's Balin's chief lieutenant. He could help you if anyone could. Uh, I have some things to do first, maybe later. Vartek spends most of his time at the assembly. I'll meet you there. He's more likely to listen if I introduce you. They say I'm Balin's favorite. I mean, you'd have to be Balin's favorite, right? You'd hope so. Okay, let's have a look. Noble! Oh man, people about to talk so much shit to me here. I hope the assembly picks a king soon. Surprised, actually. That's, that's cool. Adel Helmy? You have come at a difficult time. Orzammar is ailing for want of a king. Is that a, that's a nice looking wall? You admiring those stone engines? You're like, yes. Beautiful craftsmanship. I love being a dwarf. Nug acquired. Orzammar Cry. Raise your voice in support of Lord Harrowmont, the one true king of Orzammar and our future savior. Sorry, can't talk. A crier's work is never done. I couldn't believe it. Elman Helmy's girl in love with a smith. Atrasvala. Atrasvala. Diamond Mall. Uh, Harry wants a state. Okay. Lady, Lady Dace. Lady Dace. This has dragged on too long. It's an insult to King Endrin's memory. Okay. Um, let's have a look at our map. Oh, we don't have the full map yet, so. I hope you'll support Lord Harrowmont. Oh, I oh, oh. News of the hour. Does Lord Harrowmont think that Orzammar can hold off the dwarves forever? The assembly demands an answer. Master Miller, what are you doing here? You must be proud of your sister and nephew. Ah. Oh. We're going to have to find out, aren't we? What's the difference between these dwarven nobles and this dwarven noble? That is called Dwarven Noble. We simply must reopen the gates. I cannot live without my fresh plum jam from the surface. We simply must. Ugh. Stand over there, Brad. 
I was waiting for that. There we go. That one doesn't even talk. Uh, and that takes us to Chamber of the Assembly. Okay, well, we'll have to speak to Haramont first, I reckon. Rika said to make yourself at home. Nice. You can find your mother in the women's quarters. So angry. It's an honor Whoa. for House Iduken to have a kinsman in the wardens. <laughs> Why did that one go to an actual dialogue screen? The Shaper it? Oh, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Let's go in here. I shall do it. I shall do it. Okay. Let's have a look in this place. Thief! Who would dare take from the memories? Thief! Perhaps you should stand over there instead. <laughs> Warden, I'm outraged. A thief in the shape it. What have we been reduced to? Did you get a good look at him? I did. He was bald, with the most garish brand across his head. Almost like he took pride in being castless. Imagine. No offense, Warden. Ah, he's probably in the slum somewhere. As if he'd find a buyer for a stolen tome in Dust Town. They couldn't know the value. Love that it's like, he was bald, with a beard, and he had a brand on his face. Actually, he looked like you. <laughs> it was you. Excuse me, I can't chat. Imagine getting framed. Oh, it was the guy that was in Dust Town who looked exactly like me, actually. <laughs> I killed him already. Oh, um, pardon me. Were you looking for a particular volume? Not that I could really help. I um, don't know the libraries very well. I'm just doing some research. My favorite thing is this person is like, hello, can I help you find what you're looking for, even though I have no idea how to find it? I'll do my best. Um, what kind of research? I was looking for something about the Orton Taig. It was lost during the last blight, and there aren't many records left. They were a noble house once, descended from the Paragon Orton, who composed the grand epic of the Seven Brothers and the Ortonic Symphony. My mother's family believes they were descended from Kalana Orton, who was training in Orzammar when the Taig fell. I'm even named for the house, Orta. Unfortunately, any records would be buried in the Taig's ruins, somewhere in the deep roads. I'm a Grey Warden. I'm not afraid of the deep roads. A Grey Warden? Mother always said that if anyone could find the Tyg, it was the Wardens. I hear Prince Balin and Lord Harrimont have both been sending out small teams these days. Yes, if you can find the Tyg in any records, that could do it. That could prove I'm a noble. If you could. Maybe now that you're looking. It's almost too much to hope. Lost. To the memories. Oh yeah, shit. I'm rocking a concussion right now. <laughs> oh, a penalty to magic, eh? <laughs> That's worked out in my favor. My dwarf. When I last walked this hall, Endrin was king and Orzammar was at peace. The memories often speak of the swiftness with which change overtakes us. But it is different to see it firsthand. I apologize, Warden. I should not burden a stranger with such thoughts. I am Zebor, the Shaper of Memories. I am Zebor, the Shaper of Memories. What a fucking title. Shaper of Memories? The Shaper it guards Orzammar's knowledge. We have preserved in Lyrium all of the records of Dwarven history. The memories record all. They are how we know to which family a child owes life. How we trace lost hikes. They ensure we forget nothing of our past, good or bad. Hmm. Shall we, shall we, uh, I would like your permission to open a chantry here. Let's see how that goes. That is an odd request. Have you grown so fond of the surfacer's ways in your brief absence? Um, uh, one of Orzammar's own has returned to spread the chant. I come on behalf of Brother Burkle, a cleric of Redcliffe. I thought so. This is not the first time he's made this plea. My answer to Brother Burkle hasn't changed. So I ask you the same. On what basis would you have me insult the ancestors and overturn 2,000 years of tradition? Uh, just like, for fun? What harm would it do to let him preach? The Chantry's charities could greatly aid Orzammar. What sort of charities do you mean? Hmm. Uh. The Chantry will educate children of all castes. Traditionally, that I pressed one instead of three. 
but sometimes people <laughs> uh, didn't even answer with the one I wanted to answer. The prayer meeting as he requested, if not build a new temple to his god. At least the words would come from one of our own. Now, is there anything more? That's funny. I'm like, I'm going to pick number three by pressing one. Tell me some of Ozamal's history. I'm not from here. Perhaps the books here can make up for the lack of attention you paid your elders. We were a great empire once, and our land stretched through the deep roads. Cal Chirac was capital then. But we lost too many battles. We lost our golems. And we lost our territory. Now the Empire is simply ruined tunnels filled with darkspawn. How did you lose your, your golems? The Paragon Caradon, a smith of unsurpassed genius, invented the golems. For years they were our weapon against the darkspawn. One golem is worth a dozen dwarves in battle. But Caradon's tig is far into the deep roads. When it fell, we lost his secret to creating golems. There are books about it along these walls, if you would read more. Golems like this? Yes. We have only a few dozen left in Orzammar, and I do not recognize this one. Where did you find it? Every golem is precious to us. We'd pay a good sum for a new find. I'd sooner jump into a pit of lava. Unfortunate. Was there anything else? I must tell the rest of the Shaperit about this discovery. Where is Cal Shirok? At the other side of the old empire. During the last blight, the kings of Orzammar knew they couldn't hold everything. They sealed the deep roads, abandoning everyone still trapped in far-flung settlements. It was the only way to survive. Cal Shirok is the only other city to outlast the blight. We only rediscovered them recently, and they still haven't forgiven us. Never mind, I should go. Your presence here has been recorded in the memories. I wish I knew what significance it has. Thanks for the memories. I hope you find what you're looking for. Me too. Shh! I'm doing very important work. Okay, bro. Okay. Give me a book. Do some reading on the deep roads. There isn't a dwarf alive who remembers the deep roads as they once were. They were the network of tunnels that joined the Tigs. Sorry, I've already forgotten. Uh, Tigs, yeah. Thags was how I was saying it. Tigs is uh, how they say it. Tags. Tigs. <laughs> Together. <laughs> to be honest, it isn't even right to give them such a simple term as tunnels. They are works of art with centuries of planning demonstrated in the geometry of their walls with the statues of the paragons that watch over travelers with the flow of lava that keeps the deep roads lit and warm. The cloud gazes up on the surface talk of the Imperial Highway built by the Magisters of old, a raised walkway that crossed thousands of miles, something that could only have been built by magic. Perhaps it is comparable to the deep roads, although we dwarves didn't need magic. I suppose it doesn't matter anymore. The Darkspawn rule the deep roads now. When Orzammar sealed off the entrances to the deep roads, abandoning everything that lay out there, we handed over the kingdom that was to those black bastards forever. Um, to think that there are genlocks crawling over uh, Bonamar now, tearing down our statues and defiling our greatest works. Corruption covers everything we built out there. Every dwarf who goes out and comes back says that it gets worse with each passing year. The foulness spread a little further. And the cloud gazers think the darkspawn are gone just because they aren't spilling out onto the surface? Huh. One day, when Orzammar is gone for good, they'll find out differently. Those Darkspawn won't have anywhere else to go but up, and they'll do it. The surface folk will have themselves a blight that will never end. Transcript of a conversation with a member of the Dwarven Mining Cast eight, uh, in the 90th year of the Blessed Age. Oh god, there's a lot. <laughs> you guys ready to do some reading, maybe? Because there's a lot in here. In praise of the humble Nug on Delicious Nugs. We about to we about to learn some stuff. I once served a human some nug, and he proclaimed that it was like eating an unholy union of pork and hair. The idea disturbed him so much that he declined to finish his serving and made himself content with some stale bread. Of course, this only goes to show that surfaces, human or otherwise, have tragically unrefined palates. The nug is surely the most delicious animal I have ever tasted. Only a dead man would not salivate the thought of a tender morsel of roast nug melting in his mouth. The Paragon Varan. Although his house has fallen, shall always be remembered for discovering the wonders of nug flesh. 
Admittedly, it was discovered only out of desperation when he was separated from his legion and lost in the deep roads for a week, but we won't hold that against the good Paragon. While Nug Pancakes and Nuggets... <laughs> So I'm just saying nuggets, my own children love these, are the nug dishes one encounters most often. Nug can be prepared in other interesting and elegant ways. The late King Ansgar Adukan, Adukan uh, adored nug seared, uh, nug seared on a hot metal plate and finished in the oven and dressed in a cream sauce flavored with deep mushrooms. You must be careful when using the mushrooms from the deep roads because they often grow close to darkspawn bodies. They say that this is what gives them their unique flavor and intoxicating scent, but it also means that consuming too many of them may result in curious afflictions of the mind. From In Praise of the Humble Nug by Bregan Tolbert, honored chef to House Edukin. So uh, mushrooms that grow close to darkspawn bodies and curious afflictions of the mind. I wonder if it's like, it's almost some sort of weird, uh, gray warden joining ritual unofficially. They have like some similar side effects. Orzammar politics and the political structure of Orzammar. As dangerous as it is to mistake a dwarf's caste, it is far more deadly to mistake his alliances among the noble houses of Orzammar. Everyone in the city is allied with someone, whether by blood or by word. The nobles do not engage directly in commerce themselves, as that is the domain of the merchant caste, but they do serve as patrons. They invest in shops or in artisans' work, and in turn reap a share of the profits as well as a measure of the credit. Merchants and warriors alike benefit from the service of a prestigious patron. The relative power of each house is ever-changing. It is usually safe to assume that whichever noble house holds the throne is at the top of the heap, but below that, things grow into a tangled mess. Houses ally with one another by marriage. They earn rank and prestige when combatants loyal to them or from their own bloodlines win provings. They earn it when artisans they patronize become sought after or well-regarded, or when the merchants they invest in become successful. The degrees of power that these achievements confer is so murky, even to the dwarves, that it isn't unusual for nobles to challenge each other to provings over whose smith forges better belt buckles or whose servants have the best manners. Nor is it out of the ordinary to find two merchants arguing over whose noble patron has won the most acclaim, for the rank of the patron is the rank of the client. Nowhere is this more apparent than in the assembly, where the deshes, representatives of each noble house, meet. Although the king technically rules Orzammar, kings are elected by the assembly, and so each king must work constantly to maintain the support of the deshes. Kings who prove unpopular find their heirs deemed unacceptable to inherit the throne. Power then passes to another house. Yep. Legion of the Dead. Okay. Yes, Stone's greetings, friend. You will fight ceaselessly in the Legion of the Dead. Motto of the Legion of the Dead. The Legion accepts all. So I was told by one of the Legionnaires himself, a dwarf who waited quietly at the entrance to the deep roads for the rest of his unit to assemble. They gathered slowly, each equipped with heavy armor and fine weapons, each painted with grim tattoos applied at their funerals the night previous. For that is the nature of the Legion. They are all dead. Any dwarf may join the legion, so long as he is willing to give up everything he has. The funeral rites are somber. A final goodbye is said to family and loved ones. Any material goods are dispersed to heirs, and last words are said, and then it is done. The new legionnaire marches out into the deep roads, never to return. The legion fights against the darkspawn to the last, striking one final blow against the monsters that have claimed so much of their homeland. Many join the legion to clear the slate. Criminals join to avoid punishment. The dishonored join so that their houses and families need not suffer on their behalf. The bankrupted join so their debts might be forgiven. Very few join for a last chance at glory, but the Legion takes them too. This group hopes to reach the fabled fortress of Bonamar, once the Legion's home, associated with the greatest of their paragons. Uh, Bonamar is a holy place. It's lost the last great blow against the Dwarven Kingdoms, and its recapture would be a glorious signal to all of Ozamar. But capture it or no, all of these warriors will die in the deep roads. It is a sobering thought, and I now know why the dwarves say the Legion's charge is the battlefield's most frightening sight. They have nothing left to lose. Cool. Some, there's some really cool stuff in here. Dwarven faith on dwarven religion. The charge of light is almost never heard in the halls of Orzammar. This is hardly surprising, for unlike the elves, who were literally abandoned by their gods, or the Tevinters, who worshipped dragons, the dwarves have no gods at all. 
Even the concept of worship is foreign in Orzammar. Instead, the dwarves seem to venerate the stone, a name they give to the earth itself. This seems practical for a people living underground, if perhaps a bit unimaginative. For guidance in spiritual matters, they turn to their ancestors. These ancestors, who are said to have returned to the stone, communicate their wishes to the living via brutal trials by combat called provings. The ancestors' collective wisdom is maintained by the Shaperet, which can apparently store records in Lyrium itself. Set above the ancestors, who above even kings, are the paragons, dwarves who have achieved such greatness that they are elevated almost to godhood. These are the great figures holding up the hallway that leads from the surface the first glimpse of Orzammar that outsiders see. This is the War of Memories. The Shaper's Life. The blessing of the Shaperet is given only to those who walk with the stone. It is a path that cuts deep, and the road is far from secure, but those who desire to work in memory must first honour it, document the stone, protect her, and present a new history to the memories. Only then will the blessing of the Shaperet be upon you. It has begun. Traditional dwarven folk songs. Okay. Nug sits in the mud. Nug wiggles his ears. You catch the nug, he slips away. Nug gets to live another day. Nug sits in the mud. Nug wiggles his toes. You hook the nug, he slips away. Now the nug runs off to play. Nug sits in the mud. Nug wiggles his nose. You tickle the nug, he laughs away. Now the nug sits on my plate. Nug pancakes, well of dwarven nursery rhyme. Perfect. And we are rewarded with gloves of diligence. She needs 34 strength and the search for the true prophet. The search for the true prophet, this tattered tome explores the possibility that Andraste was a powerful mage and not the maker's chosen. It seems this book was saved from a fire at some point. Interesting. There you go. There's our knowledge in the shape of it. Sometimes you'll just enter a room. Oh, there's another one here. Sometimes you just enter a room and it's just like lore galore. And Very I well. missed one right here. The Legion of Steel. Paragon Caradin vanished in the 11th year of the reign of King Val Valtor, and with the Paragon, the entire process for golem manufacture was lost. Expeditions were sent into the deep roads to track him, but the Darkspawn drove them all back. Finally, in the second year of the reign of Queen uh, Gaetha, 126 uh, golems, the entire Legion of Steel, were sent to recover the Paragon. None returned. The Shaper of Golems refused to support any further attempt to find Caradin, and the Paragon was officially declared dead. The Shaper had never recovered from the loss of an entire Legion of Golems, and never again allowed an all-Golem regiment in the Deep Roads. Yeah. Sweet. All right. That was the, that was the Shaper. Get learning. Get educated. Um, we're going to go to... Um, Paramount first, because that will be less of a f awkward family reunion situation. I require a moment of silence to take in this magnificent sight. To the royal. Oh, hang on. There's also the Ozma Royal Palace. As well. Yeah. I missed that too on my walk Lord through here. Lord is the voice of change and defense. Lord Haramont is the voice of stagnation and ruin. That was. Hey. I shall do it. God damn. I was hidden up there. <laughs> House Aid Adekin, Shield of Orzmar. The assembly has never named a paragon with so little disagreement as there was for Paragon Adekin. No naysayers, only a single abstention. His worthiness was unquestionable, his favour with the ancestors clear. But family rumour says that the man himself was deeply troubled, prone to fits of melancholy and self-doubt, never satisfied with his great achievement in protecting Orzammar, he died cursing that he had not managed to save the outlying uh, Tigs. Before he rose to Paragon, he was of little note. The memories tell us that he never entered a single proving, never sought to elevate his place among the warrior cast. I keep saying cast as well warrior cast he spent most of his years prior to the first blight fighting skirmishes in the deep roads keeping them free from surface bandits content to live quietly with his wife and daughters when the blight began it caught orzammar in the midst of a vicious interhouse war most of the warrior cast was caught up in the feuding for as word of attacks poured in 
Each great house demanded that the army be sent to defend their taig, and no house would agree to sacrifice their own holdings for the safety of any others. The assembly was so utterly tied up with the infighting that the Darkspawn spread unchecked to the gates of Orzammar herself. In the chaos, Adakun grudgingly took command of the armies. He enlisted the aid of the mining caste to collapse over to collapse overrun passages, called upon the smith caste to supply them with arms, and bypassed the assembly and the nobles entirely. With his leadership, Ozma was saved from annihilation. For his insubordination, he was made paragon. Yet he always considered it a defeat. I need to look up on the wall there. Questions arise regarding Lord Bailey. Paramount's estate. <laughs> Butler. Welcome to Lord Harrowmont's estate. Welcome to Lord Harrowmont's estate. Only Lord Harrowmont is fit to be king. You would say that. Harrowmont is the rightful king, and you know that. Let's talk to let's talk to Doolin. We are honored by your trust, Lord. I heard there was a Grey Warden here. I am Doolin Forender, second to Lord Harrowmont. King Endrin's own choice as successor. Word is spreading that the surface may suffer a blight. It is shameful we are not in a better position to help. Um. Well, this treaty is not going to do much, is it? I would speak with Lord Harrowmont. In an ordinary time, Lord Harrowmont would be honored to meet you. Unfortunately, we've already caught more than one of Balin's spies approaching Harrowmont under a pretense of friendship. So I'm afraid I won't be able to take your word. If you want to speak to Haramont, you will need to prove he can trust you. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm now Balin's family. Stop playing games. This treaty compels you to help. You're asking the King of Orzammar to send armies to the surface, but Orzammar has no king and we have no army right now. The men who should be fighting Darkspawn are brawling in the street. If this situation is not resolved, we face civil war. If you want Lord Harrowmont's time now, you'll have to prove you have no intention of turning against him later. So you would make the whole world wait? If you wish to show you have no loyalty to Balin, then work against him in Harrowmont's name. Balin is hosting a proving today, supposedly to honor his father's memory. The Deshers take it very seriously. And unfortunately, Balin found some way to blackmail or intimidate House Harrowmont's best fighters into stepping down. So for me to just even talk to this guy, I've already got to seemingly take a negative path against uh, Balin as well. I can't just have a chat to him first and <sighs> weigh things up. Do you... Do you want me to find out why your fighters dropped out? That would be enlightening. Though I hope you won't pry too deeply into things they don't wish revealed. If you wish to show your loyalty, enter the proving as his lordship's champion. With your order's reputation, I've no doubt the ancestors would favor your arm. Balin would never work with anyone who humiliated him in that way. Aramont would have no fear of meeting with you then. I don't want to start picking sides. Then I'm afraid your only choice is to wait until there's a winner. Lord Harrowmont cannot risk his life working with someone of unproven loyalties. If you change your mind, let me know. The proving is this afternoon, and Lord Harrowmont could certainly use you on his side. This is a really, this is a really interesting way to tackle this one, and I like it. It's not. I, it's not a situation where the game is like, we're just going to let you do whatever you want and hand out all your answers and weigh up all of your information. It's like very realistic in a sense that it's like, no, nah, you can't talk to this guy actually because of what's going on with, with Balin. So you have to go against Balin to get in here. Let me just sneak in there. I can't unlock the door. Surely there'll be like a secret passageway, right? House Harrowmont is honored to have you here. Apparently not. Jersey. You must be under great strain with the blight upon the land. I will pray to the stone for you. Greetings, Grey Warden. Okay. 
Silverite Greatsword. Just here to loot your do your storerooms, don't mind me. And read a scroll. It has begun. A letter from King Endrin. My Lord Harrimont. My guilt weighs heavily on me, and I know that I was a fool. Only a fool would cut out his own heart and burn it for the sake of appearances. I allowed the assembly to send my child to exile and death because I feared an inquiry into Trian's murder would taint our house with scandal. You have been my rock and my shield these long months, and for that I thank you. But I ask for one more thing. Uh, I wish to discover if my child survived. Even the smallest trace will set my mind at ease. Send your men, your scouts, anyone who will go. Balin thinks I am mad. He says that if word spreads of my wish, our house will be undone. He doesn't know that Ajakin is already lost. I destroyed us when I sacrificed what was most precious. Please, Pyrrhal, help me. I come to you not as a king, but as a father. A late note. A note from the late King Endrin Ajakin. Hmm. Interesting. Most interesting. I don't think that uh, I don't think that changed anything in our um, quests or anything. By right, picking that up. Well, guess we're not speaking to to Haramont without picking without picking sides. I don't know what I want to do yet. So this is going to be interesting. And and then I guess we can speak to... We should just be able to straight up just go and speak to Balin. We can go to the Proving if we want, fight in the Proving again, your voice in which is quite funny. Lord Balin. He will bring us change and prosperity. It's in the Royal Palace. I get scared when the game sits on the loading screen for too long. I mean, it's not frozen. It's just... Thank God. Quick save real quick. <laughs> Royal Guard. Keep your hands to yourself, Brand. I'm watching you. You must be proud of your sister and nephew. This looks like I won't be able to go to the royal estate. I can he's blocking it. No one enters the prince's estate without an invitation. The prince values your support, Lord. Okay, he values my support. Huh? What was that? Ooh, hang on. What is that? What is that doing? Standing on here is doing something. Can't interact with this though. What the fuck? It's like something is opening. Alright, well, you, please. Stand on there and then I'm gonna have a look around. It's like something is opening. Fuck. I'm just gonna go explore my own team. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's gonna like if that's open to. What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh, these are the thieves. Oh, they're tunneling. <laughs> Tunneling thief. <laughs> as soon as I just try to explore on my own, dude. <laughs> as soon as I try to explore on my own. Make a preserve. So funny. I try to be merciful. I'm like, what is happening on the floor? Oh, I'm just getting fucking surprise attacked by a bunch of thieves. 
get decapitated, son. Good on you, Warden. You caught them in the act. I guess desperate times drive people to strange things. Thanks again, Warden. Yep. Fucking. As you say. Don't mind me. I was just chilling. I'm trying to figure out secret stuff. I shall do it. Just here to loot the royal palace, everybody. So don't mind me. Many of King Endrin's belongings have been rushed into storage, including trophies of his long reign. Among the boxes is a small glass phylactery. The area is unnaturally cold. Dark shapes swirl around a slip of paper within the vial. Ooh. Hold on a sec. Take the vial. The, gra the glass fractures at your touch. <laughs> Oh yeah, you know that what? That reminds me, there was a revenant in the circle tower that we never killed. That's funny. Oh, it was another one of these. There was another one of these in the circle tower. Maybe we should, when I go to the circle tower, because I've got missions to do there now, maybe we should go back there and take this fuck, take this fucking revenant out. Okay. Let's see how we go. Tries to get a backstab, Shale punches it into a corner. That's fine. Aha, you got paralyzed. Fuck you. I love my paralyzing blade. So sick. Can't get stunned. Well, I'm gonna do stone aura, I reckon. It makes me a target, but it should help everybody, I think. Should help everybody else at the very least. Damn you! As you say. We need fight. Oh man. It's not working well. Right, you take that off. Get back into the fight. Woo! I killed a revenant, baby. A scrap of paper, a dirt encrusted piece of paper, and a greater ice salve. The black vials. Binding the second corpse walker. Cast or. Oh. We need to find the other one in the circle tower to get more of this text because this says binding the second corpse walker cast from your host may you find no purchase on mortal ground bound by your true name as we are sworn to do nithamus beigel revenant and perversion of a fine daughter no more will you test the veil nor reach the fade to escape undraste hold you demon and bind your rage for eternity six thumbprints in blood mark the end of the text cool well i've just killed myself a revenant but yeah, there is another one that, that I'm aware of in the um, Very well. the circle tower. We find another love letter. It's been a long time since I've loved a letter, and I don't know what it is. Um, honestly, it gets to the point where I, we look through these. And I'm like, oh, I can barely remember. I think it might be this one. Dear Sir John, your ministrations, while well-intentioned, hold no promise. Do not despair, for it is not you, it is of me. I require an interval to acquaint myself with the personage you awakened. I'm certain we can maintain an amiable accord, and that engagements with our mutual associations will not be awkward. What a polite breakup. Oh, the throne of Ozamar. I wish to place my butt upon it. Let's go. I'm a sit. I'm gonna sit on it. As you say. Caged in stone. 
This inscription is old and worn, overlooked by most as a carving detail. The beast is foreign, but the need is familiar. Home and hearth suffer beneath strength and strangeness. These new kin of this Ferelden are better as friends than strangers, so we resist on their behalf and, and work with their users to bind with the stone. They, are, they no longer fear their skies, and we further our trade above. Lured from above, cornered and corralled, three standing in position, a fourth signals the throne. Stasis for the beast, so long as a king holds the throne, so long as a king wills it held. Inscription, circa 90th year of the Exalted Age. Cool. So we got some codex. I can't sit on it. What a shame. But that just leads us around here. And then we can't speak to the to the prince yet. And that does something in the throne room then. Alright. You're on this thing, so you stay there. I'm gonna have a look in here. Does anything change in here? Behind the th throne? Hmm. I don't know, I just feel like. Obviously, that thing does something, right? I was just seeing if anything visually changed when they walked in. Maybe we'll put a pin in that and we'll come back to that later, but that definitely has something to do with something. We'll see. All right, should we go and speak to, uh, to Balin then? Because Balin will be the one that will actually speak to us, it seems. To the chamber of the assembly. Very well. Ah, the Grey Warden. I've heard a lot about you from Rika. I hear you seek the aid of Orzammar's finest. I need aid against a blight. Yes, the treaty. I've seen it in the Shaper's libraries. Now the difficulty is that the treaty only compels our king, and we are sadly lacking one of those right now. Can I talk to Balin? You must understand, Aramont hides behind his good reputation while sending spies and assassins. Balin can't know who to trust. It's been like a knife in the heart for Balin to see so many of his father's men stand with the usurper. You have to you have to pick a side before you can even really get into talks with any of them. I thought King Endrin himself supported Haramont. That hurts worst of all. That Haramont would take advantage of the dying king's delirium to plant such poisonous suspicions against his own son. After that, you understand why Balin cannot trust the word of a stranger, however close to family that stranger might be. Damn, dude. <laughs> then I'll have to seek my aid from Haramont instead. I feel like we... I feel like we should go the Balin route. Hmm. Balin is my nephew's father. I would never oppose him. Would you be willing to prove that? Haramont has engaged in a campaign of bribery and coercion to ensure that every house serves him. But if a neutral party, a stranger, were to approach certain key members, perhaps with irrefutable evidence of Haramont's deception. Irrefutable evidence? Which I suppose you have? I'm certain my Lord Prince would show his gratitude. To either show this irrefutable evidence or fight in the proving, what kind of evidence? Aramont promised the same portion of his estate to two different Deshers, Lady Dace and Lord Helmy. Aramont can't possibly grant it to both of them, but they won't find out until after the vote is cast. I have copies of the promissory notes Aramont gave each of them. Once they see those, they should both reconsider their votes. I mean, that's not actually, that's not too bad. Are they true though? But yeah, that's like deception to get both on your side. 
Where did you get the promissory notes? That's not important. If they ask, say you found them while searching the Shaper's libraries for your tree. There's no uh, cunning that I can do to get the real, the real story. Isn't there someone you could report him to? Normally, the Shapers would handle this sort of accusation. As I'm sure you remember, their libraries hold all our laws and records. They should be the final arbiters of this debate. Unfortunately, the Shaper of Memories is the most important among them. And his grandfather was Lord Haramont's aunt's first cousin. Obviously, we cannot expect him to offer an unbiased opinion. I reckon, I don't know, this, this, this one almost feels better than fighting in the proving and publicly denouncing Balin. We can just be like, hey man, you're about to get shafted. I'll find Lady Dace and Lord Helmy right now. I know where both of them are. Lady Dace doesn't leave the quarter much, but Lord Helmy's adventurous, likes to spend his time at Tapsters in the Commons. Remember, don't tell them you got these papers from me. You learned of them and drew your own conclusions. This guy has a scary face to look at because his pupils, like, his, are just black. And it's just like you're looking into just a void in his eyes. It's crazy. I knew Vartag could help you. And just wait until you meet Prince Balin. You'll love him. Do you know anything about Lady Dace? Not a lot. She's supposed to be very practical. She doesn't care about larger issues, only how her own house is affected. Vartag speaks favorably of her dedication. Is there anything I should know about Lord Helmy? His mother is getting on in years and gave up her assembly seat to him. Many of the nobles think he's a disappointment. He actually thinks the lower classes are people. I could almost like him if he wasn't such a vocal supporter for Harrimont. This is the really annoying part, is like him saying, like, my, my sister having that opinion of he actually thinks the lower classes are people. It's like, I, I really hate that very unfortunate view <laughs> that uh th these dwarven traditions have they're like they're nothing i'm like and then and then that's the unfortunate part is it, i i i feel like i'd be kind of tossing that kind of stuff aside when siding with balin to keep the old ways in order instead of allowing positive change How is Vartag related to Balin? He isn't, but Gavorn is a very minor house and Balin has always favored them. Vartag's son was fostered with Idukin, which was a great honor. Balin promised that when little Indrin is 12, he'll spend a year there in exchange. Tell me a little, tell me, tell me about little Indrin. Finally you ask. Oh, he's beautiful, with the biggest brown eyes and so smart. He already knows who his father is. I'm sure his first word will be Prince. But you're giving me that look. I can take a hint. Finish your business and we can talk later. Off with you then. Far be it for me to keep you from service to my house. I still love saying that. My house. If I side with uh, Haramont, I will be ruining your life. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You doing out here? Do you see how things lie, Warden? Lord Harrowmont cannot trust you unproven, but he welcomes a good faith gesture. Uh, I still haven't decided, bruh. Vartag wants me to show people that Harrowmont is a cheat. Do not tarry. Proving starts this afternoon. I love that he's like following me. Um. <sighs> oh. I, 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 I do not know. I do not know the choice that I will make. A prince's favor and a lord's trust. I think what's really um, frustrating me about these two is um, you have to pick sides first. I'm not a, like, I need a person that just can sit down with me and give me like an info dump on what everything stands for. It's like I'm like 
just blindly voting for someone without understanding their policies, what they're intending to do, any of it. It's just like, this guy, he's shady. This guy, he's shady. Who's the least shady? And I think I'm almost doing it for the sake of uh, of my sister to do it with with Balin, which feels like that feels selfishly charged. But it's like my my character obviously has a personal stake in it. And if the game's not going to give me a pros and cons list of both of them, then I got to just fucking be like, fuck you guys. I don't even want to elect any of you. I just want someone's help with the blight. So I think we're just going to have to go with with Balin. Um, which seems to be like the better f first task as well because this one is like just slip some people some letters this one is like publicly denounce one what the other one you know what do you want are you one of those tiresome noble hunters huh? neither my sons nor I are interested um I are you lady days I am and what business would you have with me uh, you might want to look at these papers. Well, this isn't exactly a surface broadsheet. Where did you get these? Never mind. It is true enough, but there's nothing I can do about it. This deal was made on behalf of our entire house. Only my father can revoke it. Oh. Well, uh, will you tell him? I cannot. Not for weeks. He is leading a deep roads expedition, trying to secure an ancient tie. It's unlikely he'll be back before the election, but perhaps this vote is important enough for you to brave the tunnels to tell him? The Dace family would be in your debt. God damn it. <laughs> it's never, never easy, is it? Okay, gotta go into the goddamn deep roads. How would I know where to find your father? He was searching an old Iduken site. He left me with this map in case his expedition never returned. I'll give you a pass as well. Usually, no one is allowed past the front lines. Does that mean you'll go? Uh, yes. I'll leave right now, apparently. So Balin's victory means enough for you to risk your life. How interesting. How interesting. Uh, sure. Into the deep roads we go, apparently. Let's give, uh... Let's give... Would the end of Ozamar be nigh? Turn to Lord Harrowmont and assure the future of Dwarven society. Oh, and another thing. It's like the... Two years tomorrow. By all the holy sodding ancestors. How can you people just ignore that? Bronca didn't go alone, Ogren. She took the whole house. Everybody but you. So just get over to Tapsters and drown yourself already. You know as well as I do, that's how this always ends. You think I'm afraid of some cub warrior who's barely off the teach? Ha! <laughs> I'll... You lift a weapon or attack a single citizen in Orzammar, and you're stripped of your caste and exiled. Even you can't have forgotten that. Get out of here before I call a guardsman. Hmm? And he just leaves. Um, also, yeah, another thing that really bugs me is... The nobles and this the, the council they're only in it for them for themselves as well like all the nobles just like obviously there's what the what the king wants but the king isn't even really in charge it's the it's the the council that that really have the have the power as well so i don't know um i've read that one uh, I think it's this one. Uh, it is agreed that no rules of procedure were explicitly broken, but a five-day filibuster is nonetheless worthy of censure. Division of House uh, Gorosmote property was deliberated for a full session and forfeiture of the Southern Estate deemed a necessity. Since the birth of young Cade necessitates his elevation to noble status, and it is unthinkable for a noble's family to live in the slums, it is the responsibility of the father to accommodate the placement of his family. 
It is not possible to simply generate new space in the Diamond Quarter without compromising Taig structural integrity. Lord Dace's comment that if Lord Gorismot didn't want a new heir, he shouldn't have slummed for a concubine was indeed inappropriate, but the proper procedure for resolution through proving was followed. Both parties agreed to accept his retraction, and the matter is considered separate and closed. The decision of the Assembly regarding the placement of the Duncoat clan stands. Okay. Is it true there's civil war on the surface, too? Master Miller, what are you doing here? Everywhere is civil war. And also the Darkspawn. Ozmark giving me them big ass loading screens. Brother Berkel, I have news. Andraste teaches that patience is the child of wisdom, but I'm eager to hear if you've seen the Shaper. He agreed to let you hold prayer meetings. Oh, praise the Maker! You truly walk in the light, friend. I already found a convert among the merchants who offered his shop as a temporary chantry. It's just by the tapsters. Please, come to our first service. All the drunk people seeking uh, a change in their life can go there. Lord, help me. I wasn't expecting you back. I guess you realize this is about the only fun in Orzammar? Ah, uh, so, uh, I have news. Harrimont is double dealing you and Lady Dace. Oh, well, I'd ask for proof or why you care, but frankly, I'm so tired of it, I'm not even surprised anymore. I don't even want the land, but my house would kill me if I turned it down. Responsibilities, you know. Now I'll have to go through the whole process of rejecting the deal. And we'll both have to try something else. And I thought it was going to be a nice day. So you'll switch your vote to Balin? I don't know. I hear he killed his own brother. That's worse than crooked land deals, but the rest of my house may not agree. Ozma needs a strong and ruthless leader, apparently. My sister is uh, castless, and Balin raised her to his house. That's my personal stake in it. Got only get two choices. I don't want to come across as selfish, so uh, and only self-interested. Does it? I sometimes wonder if it wouldn't do better with a fair and intelligent leader. Mm. But I guess that's harder to find. You showed the promissory notes to Lord Helmy. He says he will speak to his mother about them. The Helmys will probably think twice about supporting Harrimont now. Okay. And now the other journey is to go to the Deep Roads, of which there are a few things to do there. We've got uh, quite a few quests. So what we will be doing is we'll be putting a pin in that, and we'll be getting to it next episode. So thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of Dragon Age Origins. I'm hoping that maybe we get a little bit more, like, cool stuff with shale in, in Ozamar, um to come so far it's been like yeah not not much um we can always uh change change the party at some point if we'd want to bring uh anyone else in uh we'll just have to see how we go but thank you so much for joining me today i'll see you next time for the deep roads and potentially electing a king depending on how long that takes i'll see you then